Hello SimHub users, this is part 7 in a video series of using Dash Studio in SimHub. Today we're going to be looking at the text component and binding. A lot of people might think that the text component is simply for adding some static text to your dashboard, like break bias. So if I just click on my text component, it puts in this text component into my dashboard. And let's change its name to break bias label and change its text property to break bias and decrease that font size and resize it. And so we could put just the text break bias with the expectation we would put the numeric value for break bias below that. So yes, that is one thing that the text component can do, but it's much more powerful than that when we get to binding the value of the text with some telemetry property from SimHub. I'd like to show you a full list of all of the telemetry data that's available in SimHub. So I'm going to open up the main program window. And whenever you're building a dashboard, I think it's nice to have some replay telemetry data going so you can see some values in there. It helps with debugging and understanding what sort of value is coming in from the telemetry. So I have ACC selected and I have a replay already, this race at Laguna Seca. So I'll start that and I'll, I'll bring us a little bit into that race. Okay, so this data is actively, this replay is actively running. I will minimize this now. And on the left-hand side of the SimHub program window is this Available Properties. And you can see that it is a list of literally thousands of telemetry data points. And my list might have more than yours. That's because I have some plugins installed. I'm going to link to some plugins that will add additional telemetry data to your available properties. And those were made by other SimHub users like Romain Rob and Gary Swallow and NC Ferrum and SJ Dawson. So if there is a particular telemetry data that you're looking for and you don't find it, I would look into those additional plugins and see if it's already been created for you. And we can search this list. So let's say we're interested in temperatures. If I just type in temp into the search bar on the top, it's going to give me all of the results that have the phrase temp in it. And I see I have my air temperature here. I'm getting brake temperatures live coming in, tire temperatures continuing down, even my temperatures of my CPU right now. So this is useful in helping find something. One thing to note is that not all telemetry values are going to be available in all sims. For example, Assetto Corsa Competizione will be able to show when ABS has kicked in. Let's search for ABS. And ABS active is going to be zero or one based on if you know I'm braking hard enough to engage ABS. But in iRacing, we don't have access to that. So this data would not, there it just flashed one if you saw that. In iRacing we would not get data for that. So be aware if you are developing a dashboard for multiple sims or for a particular sim, what data is supported and what data is not. Now this Properties Explorer is also available within Dash Studio when we are binding. So let's return to Dash Studio. And I want to put break bias down here. So I'm going to add another text element. And let's resize it, change its text size, and resize this box. Put it directly under our break bias. Now the text property is going to default to text, and I can type in a number here like 51.5. That's just what's going to appear on the developer interface. It's not going to appear on the dashboard because I'm going to bind the text property of this. So next to the text is this little F of X button, which currently if I hover my mouse over it, it says no binding. And also when this box is gray, that indicates that there is no binding associated with this property. 
To change that, I click on the f of x box and it brings up my text binding window, which is currently set to none. I want to change this to computed value. And now the bulk of this window is where I can enter a formula. My first formula is going to be very simple. I'm just going to show a property. And instead of having to memorize and learn all those, I have this nice insert property button. And that brings up that same list we were looking at before. And since I am running telemetry, we are going to see these values update automatically. Like RPMs, you can see that changing with my replay data. My replay is still going on. So I'm looking for break bias, so I typed in bias, and I'm going to take the game data break bias from my data core plugin. And I can see actively right now that my break bias is set to 60. That's the benefit of running a replay when you're creating your dash. Otherwise, this would not have any value associated with it. So I can just double click on this and notice that it put break bias inside of square brackets into my formula bar. And we can use NCalc or JavaScript. Those are two different languages. If I click on use JavaScript, it's not going to like it because I brought in this property with the NCalc syntax. And so if I were to delete that, I can insert that same property using JavaScript. And notice that we have a different syntax there, dollar sign prop. And then inside of parentheses, inside of single quotes, we have break bias. Both of those are going to result in the same thing, but since I'm just getting a simple property, not doing any math or any other functions, I'm just going to use ncalc. Great. So let's click OK and let's run this dashboard. And we can see that my break bias is set to 60. And that's not going to change throughout the course of this race, so it will remain at 60. But let's talk about the output formatting. Say that we wanted to show this to one decimal place, because break biases can be set to a fraction of a whole number. So going back into my binding for this text property, this result format is where I can specify how I want this number outputted. And so a simple zero is going to show me this number rounded to the nearest whole number, which is what we're seeing. If I want to show that to one decimal place, I can do 0, .0. And notice under formatted result, it forced it to the tens decimal place, even though there isn't one, even though this number could easily be rounded to 60. If you want to force it to show one decimal place, we could do that. If you want to force it to show two decimal places, we could do that. Also, break bias can, in fact, be expressed as a percentage, because it's the percentage of the brake power that's going to the front brakes. So after my 0.0, .0 I could put a percentage sign next to it. But unfortunately, that's going to expect that this value is being expressed as a number between 0 and 1, and so it multiplies it by 100. If I just want to show that percentage symbol, I can surround that percentage sign inside of single quotes then the percentage sign is more seen as text and not seen as having to do some math to a true percentage value between 0 and 1. If I wanted a space between the number and the percentage sign, I can put that inside of my single quotes and my formatted result would look like this. There are also result formats for time data, and you can see the differences between these where we can show hours, minutes, seconds, and fractions of a second. And they work the same way. Three Fs is going to show the fractions of a second to three decimal places, or to the millisecond. If I wanted to show these just to the tenth of a second, I could get rid of two of the Fs at the end after putting this in. But obviously these time formats don't make any sense for a break bias value. So I'll keep this as is and get rid of the space. So my formatted result is going to show up as one decimal place with a percentage sign. I'll click on OK. And if I run the dashboard again, we're going to see that my break bias is expressed as 60.0 and a percentage sign. But that didn't fit. So let me modify this to stretch it out so that the data will fit. And also, let's change my horizontal alignment to centered run it again, and that's looking better. 
Okay, so that's the first example of binding a property to a text component. Let's look at another one. We do have telemetry data for position. And so say you're in eighth place in the race, we can show an eight on the dashboard. We also have a telemetry data for how many opponents are in the race. And so maybe there's 20 people in this race, but I want just one text component that's going to show that I am in position eight out of 20. So I can combine multiple properties in one text component. Let's do that. I'll add some text, I'll put it on the top right, I'll resize it, I'll resize my font like this. And under text, this is what's going to show just in my designer. And so maybe I will do POS colon eight out of 20, just to see what it looks like there. And let's change its binding. First thing I want in here is some text. I want the text POS for position and followed by a colon. I do want a space after that colon, so I'm going to manually type that in as well and close the single quotes. Whenever we want to put literal strings or text into these formulas, we need to surround that text with single quotes. Then I'm going to use the plus you're familiar with the plus sign being used for addition, but in computer programming, yes, it can be used for addition. It can also be used in some language for what we call concatenation. And that is taking two strings and putting them together so that they become one string. So after this, we wanna put what position we're in. So I'm going to insert a property and search for position. And that's right here, game data position. But we're not done. I now want to put a forward slash. So another plus, and then the forward slash, again, I want to put inside of single quotes so that it is treated as just a literal string. And we can see where we're getting down here in our formatted result. The last thing we want is how many drivers there are in the race. So another plus sign and another property, and this is going to be the opponent's count. Although the opponent's count of 19 doesn't include us, so I'm going to add one to that. And to do that, I'm going to surround this opponent's count plus one inside of parentheses so that this gets treated as numeric math and this plus sign here gets treated as concatenation. So now if we look at our formatted result, we have position nine of 20 and that is looking good. So click okay and let's run my dashboard in a window, minimize that and with our telemetry data going and let's skip ahead in the replay. It's midway through the race and let's up the speed. So I went from ninth to eighth place. I gained a position there. Let's see if I gain any more in seventh now. Do I end the, oh, I go down to sixth. And back to the beginning of the race. So that is an example of position X of Y using a text binding. Let's keep that running. Go back to editing our dashboard. And now I'm going to add another text property. This is going to be the track temperature. So we'll add a text item. Actually, I'm just going to copy this since I know I've reduced the, uh, the, the text size there. Also, I have text item zero and text item one. That's fine if you have a really simple dashboard with a few things, but once you get to have more advanced dashboards with lots of controls on it, it's really useful to name your components. So I'm going to call this break bias value. I could even put these two into a folder so they move together or a layer. Good, and I can drag these inside. And we talked about this before, but with these two values inside of the break bias container or layer, I can now link these, put them into a group, and now these two can move together. And for text item one, let's call this position. Position X of Y. And I'll take this and I will copy it and paste it. So I don't want to call this position X of Y. This is going to be track temp. 
and let's change the text in here to just say a value. Let's say it's 95 degrees. To write the degrees symbol, we need to use something called alt codes. These work in any Windows application, and there's tables available online of alt codes. What if ever you need to type a special character or a Greek symbol or some sort of math symbols that aren't necessarily on the keyboard, look up the alt code for it. I know that the alt code for the degrees symbol is 0176. So I'm holding down alt on my keyboard and then typing 0176 on my numpad on the right. And I release the alt key and you can see we got the degrees symbol appearing right there. One thing to note is that not all of the fonts in here are going to have all of those symbols created. So if you are not seeing, say, a degrees symbol with the font you have selected, or maybe you're just seeing some box representing that it doesn't know what that character is, choose a different font if you need to use a special character. Again, this is just what we're going to see in the designer view, but now let's bind a property to it. Since I had copied this, this already has that text binding for position x of y, so I'm just going to delete what I have in there for the formula. And let's get the track temperature, which I think is in here as road temperature. Here it is, road temperature. Now notice we're getting live values because I am in fact running a replay and it's 31.29. That's not the track temp in Fahrenheit, that's the track temp in Celsius. And so if we want it in Celsius, we're fine. We can finish here, but if I want to display it in Fahrenheit, I need to do some math. And it's pretty simple math. Uh, I can multiply this by the fraction 9 fifths, and to that add 32. That's the formula for converting Celsius into Fahrenheit. And so now we're seeing that our track temp is 88.3 degrees Fahrenheit, but I don't want to see anything after the decimal place. So I'm going to change my format to just zero, meaning I'm going to see the number but nothing after the decimal place. And then I want to show the degrees symbol, which I need to use my alt code for again, alt 0176, release the alt, and I get the degree symbol, and let's put a capital F in there. So here's what my formatted result is going to look like now. And let's match our text here for our sample, putting in an F there. And if I save my dashboard and run it again, we are now seeing our active track temperature here of 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I mentioned we can use the NCALC language or JavaScript, but in future videos I'll get into more advanced topics on programming in here like if statements and how to check if a value has been changed, say that the break bias value has been changed, we could do something there, how to wait a certain number of milliseconds, how to deal with loops and arrays, things that you might find useful in your coding of the, the text binding properties.